I'm James. I'm joint manager of Scottish American, or Saints as we tend to call it. And this evening I'm going to talk about how Saints has managed to deliver a dependable and growing income. Before I do that though, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes just talking through the, um, the background, the history of Saints. For those who haven't come across it before, if you don't know about it, I thought that would be helpful to put it in some context. Then we'll get on to the, um, the meat of the presentation. Um, Tom did such a wonderful job of reading the <laughs> disclaimer word by word earlier on. I'll skip straight through that. Um, and we'll start here. So um, we'll start top right with the history of Saints. The Trust was founded uh, almost 150 years ago. And it was founded by a group of individuals who were frustrated um, at the levels of income that they could generate within the UK. At the time, the Bank of England base rate, this is back in 1873, was about 3.5%. And they thought this was outrageously low. Um, little did they know. And um, they had the brainwave that maybe if they took their savings and invested outside the UK, they could find many more opportunities with more attractive levels of income. So um, the, the history of the trust is very much about taking um, the opportunity to go outside the UK, still invest somewhat in the UK today, but seize the opportunity overseas to generate an attractive income. Bailey Gifford were appointed as managers of the trust about 15 years ago, and we have, over that period of time, extended the track record um, of dividend growth at the trust which is now uh, 38 consecutive years of growth in the Saints dividend. And if you look back in the history books, you will find that the last time there was a reduction in Saints dividend was back in 1938. So it's been uh, really quite a dependable source of income. The two key outcomes that we're trying to deliver to Saints shareholders are, first of all, a, an attractive level of income and a dependable level of income. Um, by dependable, what we mean is um, an income that if, if you as a, a shareholder, you can rely on through thick and thin, through the business cycle, the economic climate, doesn't really matter. You can rely on us to carry on paying the same level of income to you and hope, hopefully grow it as well. So that's a key part of what we do as managers of Saints. And the second core objective is to deliver growth over time. And Tom talked earlier about what a wonderful thing compounding is over long periods of time. We fully subscribe to that uh, belief, and so everything we do is about delivering not just a level of income today, but about growth in that income over time, because that's going to give you a much better, better outcome. Bottom left, I hope you can read this chart. You can see the, um, the growth in Saints Dividend since uh, Bailey Gifford took it over in 2004, and um, you will... I'll read it off for you. Um, UK prices over that period have risen about 40%. Saints dividend has risen about 80%. So significantly outpaced UK inflation. Uh, the current yield is uh, uh, somewhat north of 3%. And then the last thing to be aware of with Saints uh, is the asset structure. So uh, about uh, the, the, the vast majority of the assets of Saints are invested in equities, about 80% of the total assets. And that reflects our strongly held belief that if you um, are looking for not just income but also growth over time and you want to get the benefit of that compounding, equities are by far the, the best asset class for you to be in to deliver growth ahead of inflation over time. So um, uh, about 80% of total assets, or it would be about 93% of the NAV of the trust, is invested in equities. We then also invest in um, property and bonds alongside that, directly held property portfolio, also a bond portfolio. And that allows us to supplement the income from the equity portfolio and, and uh, raise that um, level of income a little bit higher. But the, the, the heart of, the, of Saints is, is an equity portfolio. Last thing, just to put it into context, um, this is, I guess, why it's relevant, we think, um, today as a trust. It's very well talking about 150 years of history, but why is this interesting to people today? If you, if you let's say that you took um, £100,000 to invest, and you invested that, um, let's say you're in retirement, you're looking at maybe a 20-year period in this example of investment. Current annuity rates on the left of this um, chart will show you that for that 100,000, you, you could expect to receive next 20 years somewhere around 50 to 60,000 pounds of income. If we do our jobs on, uh, as managers of saints, if we carry on doing um, 
uh, the same job that we've been doing for many years. We think that f from our equity portfolio, starting on about a 3% yield, we think somewhere around 3% real growth is achievable from, from the portfolio. Um, that will, first off, generate enormously more income for you over that 20-year period, the, the sort of 80,000 pounds of income, but you'll also have huge capital growth as well, which you are free to do with what you want. So the, um, the financial rewards of investing in this way compared with some of the other um, uh, uh, op options available, we think are really exciting and really compelling. So, um, that I hope gives you a flavour of what Saints is and, and what we do. What, what I'm going to talk about in depth now is um, what we do as managers to make sure we are delivering a growing income and also a dependable income. And I think there are really three key parts to what we do there. And the first of those is uh, stock selection. Our sort of fundamental philosophy is that... Um, if we're going to deliver those outcomes to shareholders, the best way to do that is just to go out and look for companies which can do exactly the same thing, i.e. go out and search the world for companies that can not just deliver dependable dividends, there are lots of companies that can do that, um, but also, additionally, deliver growth over time. We want companies that can do both of those things because that matches perfectly with what we're trying to do for Saints. So a key part of um, the way that we manage Saints uh, is to um, go out in the world and look for those fantastic investments, those fantastic companies that can do both dependable income and growth at the same time. We are a team of about, uh, we're a team of six full-time investors, um, managers and analysts, and sitting within Bailey Gifford we have about 100 colleagues who are constantly generating um, great growth ideas. We have a sort of abundance of ideas currently constantly coming up, great growth stocks. And on our team, we take a lot of those and we say, well, which of these will also deliver a dependable income over time as well? Because many of them throw off a lot of cash and pay really good dependable dividends. So that um, process allows us to come up with a portfolio of, of companies that can grow and pay a dependable dividend. The other key part of what we do is um, taking a long-term approach in everything we do. Um, again, harking back to the, the earlier slide on, on the benefit of compounding over time, our mindset is very much one about um, targeting long-term dividends, not short-term yield. As an income manager, there is a tremendous temptation to go for yield. It's always there, oh, it's a 5%, it's a 10% yield. Often those yields are risky, though. Um, often they don't come with any growth. Um, so our mindset is very much built around what is the total income that our clients can expect or that Saint shareholders can expect to receive over a long period of time. That's fundamental to how we manage the trust. Um, if you look at the um, turnover within the portfolio, you would see that our typical holding period of any investment um, exceeds five years to get those benefits of compounding. And then um, taking time to understand businesses, um, being disciplined about that and then ultimately owning businesses for, for many years to, to capture the benefit of compounding. To, to, to bring a bit of colour to this and, and hopefully bring it to life for you a bit more, um, I've put on this next slide the, the stock selection framework that we, that we use when we're looking at any company. So uh, I mentioned all, earlier all those different ideas that uh, we, we look at and come bubbling up. Um, we then put every one of them through this set of questions. And what we're really looking for is companies that, that ace every question, that do really well and, and drop out of this, um, this framework really well. And what this makes sure that we do is, is, is ultimately that we buy into companies where we're very excited about the long-term growth prospects. So, for example, the third question you'll see here is about the likelihood of any company that we're looking at delivering real growth in profits over five years plus. Um, what that means for cash flows, and then asking about the, the dependability of the dividend in advance, thinking about that. What would happen if we had another 2008? Um, what would happen if we had another 2001? Another 1991? Another 1957? All different things that we think about in advance to, to have peace of mind about the resilience of the dividend in advance. So pu putting companies through this this list, a key part of making sure that we're buying companies that really fit with Saints' objectives. Yeah. And you'll see here, for um, uh, halfway down, there's a reference to something called the dependability checklist. Um, 
Earlier there was uh, some uh, commentary on um, uh, dividend cover and, and, and uh, metrics like that um, as a way of assessing dividend dependability. Um, we uh, have a, a, a pretty comprehensive approach to thinking about lots of different factors that can matter for dividend dependability. We spend a lot of time studying the history of companies that have cut their dividends from ones that didn't. And what can we learn from those? And from that, we've come up with this, this checklist that, again, we put every investment through to see, is this likely to be a dependable source of income or not? So, for example, um, one of the questions here is about the management or the board attitude to defending the absolute level of dividend. So at Bailey Gifford, we have very good access to company management teams. That means that we can ask them before we even invest, let's suppose we're in another situation like 2009 or 2001. What would you be thinking about the dividend? How, how much would you try to defend it? Does it not matter to you? Would you just stop the dividend, buy back shares? What, what would you do about it? Um, similarly, the, the, the strength of the balance sheet, um, the, the historic cyclicality of, of, of cash flows, lots of different things that we look at that give us a good read on, is this a dependable source of income or not for Saint shareholders? So um, the, the philosophy, the, the, the stock selection framework, the, the checklist, all um, ways that through stock selection we try to ensure we're getting growth and dependable income. Second uh, key way that we as managers of Saints go for that dependable growing income, diversification. This uh, next slide shows every holding currently in Saints equity portfolio. Um, I believe there are handouts available on this, so if you can't read every name and you're curious, then you can pick up the handout and you can um, study this at your leisure. But um, uh, what this shows is the sort of 70 or so names that are within our uh, equity portfolio and in Saints. They're arranged across the horizontal axis from low yield to high yield. And these are all companies that have been through that stock selection process and we've said, it, it's fantastic. It's a perfect fit for extending Saints' dividend record for, for growth as well as income. And uh, one thing that you'll see from this is um, a point about diversification. None of the individual contributors dominates the chart. There's no one stock that outweighs all the others in terms of income. It's quite a flat portfolio. In fact, we cap the income contribution of any individual stock to 5% of the portfolio's income to make sure we're getting the diversification benefit across, across the portfolio. And what this also shows you is um, different types of growth. So the color codes, um, the different types of boxes, um, talk about the, the, uh, some variety of growth that we're expecting out of the investment. The blue boxes, for example, are what we call compounding machines. There is actually a, a color key here, which explains this. Again, if you, if you pick up the handout, you can read about this in more detail. Um, so the compounding machines, stocks where there's a fantastic entrenched competitive position, a really healthy balance sheet, proven management team, steadily delivering growth in dividends year in and year out. Um, various different types of growth. Um, what this makes sure of is that, again, we've got that alignment, not just that these companies pay a dividend and a dependable dividend, but there's a, there's a reason why we strongly back them to grow in real terms over time. Sector diversification, another way we underpin Saints' dividend. Um, this um, echo is a chart you, you saw earlier um, showing the, in this case, the FTSE All Share breakdown of um, income by industry. And you'll see again that heavy exposure to oil and gas, banks, etc. Not, uh, in our view, a terribly um, safe source of income. Um, and um, with the best one in the world, probably not a growing source of income either. Um, but if you invest passively in the market, that, you're taking that exposure in income. On the right, you can see. Um, the diversification of Saints' equity portfolio by industry, much less concentrated. The, the largest exposure is in personal goods, that's of toiletries, cosmetics, at about 9%. The way that we are able to achieve that diversification of the income is by being global. By our estimate, about uh, in the UK, there are somewhere around 200, maybe 225, um, stocks that pay a meaningful dividend and that are liquid enough to invest in. The global universe of those companies is about two and a half thousand, about ten times the size. 
And that allows us to diversify the income stream a great deal more than if we were restricted to the UK. Um, and it also gives us a much bigger opportunity set to, to, to fish in. Um, geographic diversification, another um, thing that this allows us to do. If you, th this map shows some of the equity investments in, in Saints portfolio that were on that, that pyramid shaped slide earlier on. If you take a company, um, let's take Cochlear, who make um, hearing implants based in Australia, um, long standing investment in Saints, um, in, it's a wonderful company, fantastic investment, um, pay, paid a really good dividend along the way. And you compare that to, let's say, an, um, in China, Anta Sports, it's the Nike or Adidas of China, um, a, the, the local hero brand sponsoring the Olympic team. Um, again, fantastic company, um, throws off cash, committed founder, long-term vision, long-standing Saints investment. If you, if you think about those two companies, you know, one is trainers in China, and one is hearing implants in Australia. Th those are two very different opportunities and, and very different sets of risks around them as well. And, and again, this global approach is just a fantastic thing for allowing us as managers to underpin the dependability of Saints' income stream, but again, finding fantastic growth companies all around the world that we wouldn't have if we were just restricted to the UK. So, stock selection, diversification, third one, um, trust-specific borrowings and reserves um, help us achieve those objectives. We uh, make prudent use of borrowings to um, invest, as I said earlier, in the uh, property, directly held property and bond portfolios, and that, uh, that supplements the, the equity income of the, of the fund. But we've also um, able to draw on, um, or we have the advantage in the trust structure, as mentioned earlier, of um, revenue reserves. Since currently has approximately a year of um, revenues in reserves, I, we could, even if all of our holdings paid no income whatsoever, we'd still have almost enough income to pay out the dividend. It, was, it won't happen, it will never happen, it's an extreme example, but um, it's, a, it's a meaningful level of reserves. And what that allows us to do um, is um, support the, the, the record of saints in, in paying that dependable income. This is, the, this is a chart showing the um, distribution history of saints back to the, the last cut in 1938. And uh, obviously all kinds of things have happened during this period of you know, um, wars, recessions, OPEX, etc., etc., etc. What you'll see is if you look at the um, period from, let's say, around 2007 to 2011, so the, the financial crisis and uh, its aftermath, you'll see Saints' dividend through that period continued just steadily growing year after year through that period even as the economy was slowing and companies were cutting their dividends. Now, one of the things that allowed us to do that um, was that the underlying investments were diversified and they re were resilient, so uh, that's a great starting point. But the other thing is that in 2010 and 2011, um, the earnings of the trust dipped slightly below the dividend that we wanted to pay, and we were able to draw on reserves in both of those years to keep the income growing. After that, earnings bounce back, we paid back into reserves. But that's a really great benefit of a trust to be able to deliver that dependability of income. So I hope that gives you a flavor of um, the different things that we do in managing Saints to get, deliver income and, and, uh, and growth. Um, the stock selection, the diversification, some of these trust specific factors. I meant to put in the presentation, but I forgot. Um, uh, we have a website where you can, you can download all this information and read more about it, and there are videos and various other things. If you go to saints-it.com, ap apologies, I didn't put this in the presentation, I'm kicking myself, um, saints-it.com, then um, please have a look there and you can find out more information. Of course, I will be around after this event if you, um, in the foyer if you'd like to ask, ask any more questions. I hope that's helpful.